The first dilemma is from John Stone. I'm 14 and I can't stop. Please help me. Well, John Stone, first of all, you need to figure out why. Okay, and there's two whys that you need to figure out actually. The first why is why you're doing it, and the second why is why you need to stop. Now, as far as the first why goes, why you're doing it, there are a multitude of different reasons as to why you might be addicted to the PMO cycle, but more often than not, it's rooted in some form of escapism. You are trying to escape from something in the present moment, and you're using hedonism by means of PMO as that means of escapism. So you need to figure out what it is you're trying to escape from. Now I understand that at the age of 14 or 15 years old, it can be difficult to go within and figure out the core of your traumas because you don't really have enough life experience to really go within and have that contextual understanding of what you're feeling. You just know that you feel a certain way and you don't know what that feeling is and you don't know why you feel that way. But at the same time, you're also closer to your formative years. Your formative years are ages nine and under. So more often than not, we have traumas or better yet conclusions that we draw in those formative years. And once we draw those conclusions, they shape our perceptions of ourselves and by extension, the world at large. Now, the caveat is that a lot of these conclusions can become very, very limiting in nature as you get older and you subconsciously seek reinforcement for said conclusions because those are the foundation of your self-identity. Now, I understand this may seem a little bit complex for a 14-year-old, but basically to put it into layman's terms, you need to stay in the moment and figure out why you're relapsing. What is it that's stressing you out in your life right now? At the age of 14, I'm assuming that it's either school related, it's related to girls, it's related to bullying, something along those lines. There's something in your life situation that you're either ignoring or trying to run from. And you need to stop doing that. You need to embrace whatever it is. Now, I'm not saying that that means that you need to accept that life situation and not actively seek to change it, because obviously if you're trying to escape it, then that means that you do need to change it. But you can't change a problem, you can't solve a problem that you don't first acknowledge. So you need to figure out what that problem is and like I said, oftentimes it can be traced back to your formative years. So however you feel in the present moment, utilize that feeling to take you closer to that formative year trauma, that formative year conclusion that is leading you to escape or to attempt to escape from the present moment. Now, as for the second why, why you need to stop doing it, at the age of 14, this can be very, very difficult to establish because at 14, you don't really have a sense of direction or a sense of purpose more often than not. So what I would say is this, you need to focus on who you want to be when you're older. Okay, focus on what you want to accomplish and who you want to be. Now understand that you don't necessarily know and you're not really supposed to know at this age what you're going to do, but you can establish in your mind the vision of who you want to be. And I know that this sounds contradictory to what I said about being present, but you have to understand that the two are not mutually exclusive. In fact, in order to fulfill that vision, in order to bring that vision of your ideal self into fruition, you have to be present. Because how can you build a new version of you if you're still stuck in the past? You see, what a lot of people fall into is the cycle of allowing their past to create their futures. Because they refuse to accept and acknowledge their pasts, therefore, the past leaks into the present moment and the present moment is where the future is built. But what a lot of people don't understand is that the past is also constructed in the present moment. And what I mean by that is by you changing your perceptions and redefining your story as it pertains to your formative year trauma, those conclusions that you drew with little to no context about life itself at a very, very young age, by redefining those stories, you're able to effectively let go of whatever limiting beliefs you may have about yourself and about the world at large, and you have a clean slate in the present moment to create the version of yourself that you want to be or that you need to be in order to accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish in this life. Now, like I said, I understand that this may be very, very complex for a 14-year-old, but it's also easier for you in the sense that you're younger, so you're closer to your formative years. So that memory, whatever it is that is creating this traumatic pattern, this behavioral pattern of PMO and 
the pursuit of hedonism is much more vivid and clear in your memory. So focus on figuring out what that is. It could be related to sexual trauma of some sort. That doesn't necessarily mean that you were molested or sexually abused, but perhaps you received early exposure to sexual activity. Maybe you walked in on your parents or a friend showed you pornography, so on and so forth. And at the time, you didn't really have enough context to understand what you were seeing. And because of that, it left an imprint on your subconscious mind, an imprint of uncertainty, and you're seeking that uncertainty through the PMO cycle. I'm not saying that that's it for you, but that's probably what it is for a lot of people watching this. But nevertheless, you need to figure out what the life situation is that you're trying to run from, that you're trying to escape from, and figure out what the root cause of that life situation is, what that life situation is reflecting back to you. Now, the next dilemma is from Bekele. Kaylee, I think I said that right. I'm struggling with nofap and semen retention and I'm addicted for around four years. I'm addicted to pornography and I really want to stop before it's too late. How can I stop watching the dirty stuff and relapsing? By the way, the reason why I want to quit is because I want to take boxing seriously and I want to get some girls IRL. You feel me? I definitely feel you. That was a big part of the reason why I started nofap initially and I'd imagine that that's probably a big part of the reason why a lot of you guys started your nofap journeys and why you're watching this video is because you want to get girls. You have to understand that getting girls is not going to solve your problem. The core problem is that you are seeking fulfillment outside of yourself. At the present moment, you're seeking it through hedonism, which is pleasure, empty pleasure, empty repetitive pleasure that often leaves you in a state of distress in the long term. You're seeking fulfillment through pleasure, but substituting hedonism for women whether that be just for sexual activity or even intimate relationships, isn't going to solve the root issue. This is a mistake that I personally made myself, and I wanna save you guys the time and the trouble of having to go through the things that I went through. Stop looking to external sources for fulfillment. And I know it seems like I'm going off topic here, but that's because, like I said, I've experienced this myself and I understand how this all ties in together. You see, anything that you do that is compulsive, any compulsive habits that you do, compulsive behavioral patterns that you have are rooted in you not being present and by extension, you placing your sense of fulfillment outside of yourself on the other side of a condition or contingency. In this case right now, it's PMO. You are subconsciously placing fulfillment and self-esteem on the other side of that PMO cycle. But now all you're trying to do is replace that with women. And I saw the part about boxing as well, and that is definitely a much more, I would say, fulfilling and admirable contingency to have, but it's a contingency nonetheless. Success is the same. It all falls into the same boat. Placing your sense of self-esteem outside of yourself only leads to more emptiness. I'm speaking from experience. This is why recently I fell back into the PMO cycle, is because I thought that getting into a relationship which I was in for, I believe, six and a half months last year, and hitting 100K, getting a new car, moving out. I thought that all of these things would bring fulfillment, and they didn't. And I ended up right back at square one because my why wasn't strong enough. Your why has to be something that is rooted within you. Your why should be an expression of your already existing fulfillment in the present moment. This is how you find your true purpose. Stop seeking your purpose through external sources. Your purpose is an expression it is an expression of your fulfillment, not a source of your fulfillment. It can perpetuate the fulfillment that you express and that it reflects, but it's not the core primary source of your fulfillment. If it is, it's a false purpose. It's a false purpose because you're not being your true authentic self. You're being the residual, the echo of your past self because you refuse to be present and take accountability for your life and for your belief systems. And I'm not saying that to put you down or make you feel bad, I'm just giving you the facts. This is what you're doing, and the way to stop is to figure out your whys. Why are you doing it, and why do you need to stop? Okay, and you need to figure out a stronger reason than I want to get women in real life, because you're just gonna run into the same exact problem. A lot of people, they end up with sex addictions, which in some cases can be even worse than a PMO addiction, because now you're subjecting yourself to the possibility of sexually transmitted diseases, unwanted pregnancies, 
toxic women, so on and so forth. So you need to figure out a stronger reason why. And you also need to figure out that core reason as to why you continuously relapse on NoFap and why you continuously turn to hedonism to distract you from whatever it is that you're distracting yourself from. Figure out what you're distracting yourself from and trace it back to your formative years and figure out what trauma is preventing you from living your life free of these compulsive behavioral patterns. The next dilemma is from Anonymous with Style. You love to see it. Do I need NoFap to be successful? I'm 14 and I have a porn addiction. I can't stop fapping. I tried to go cold turkey, but it isn't working. My brain is all messed up when I do it. I have a purpose, being a guitar legend since four. I play every day. I also started working out a year ago and build a good, but always improving aesthetic muscular body, only working out at home and on parks. Do I need NoFap to be a successful, which for me is to play to lots of people in stadiums and to have a diamond record? Will it help? If this appears on your video, everyone give a like to this man. Love from Portugal. So Anonymous with Sal, no, you don't. You do not need NoFap to be successful. What you need to be successful is present moment awareness. This goes right back to what I was just talking about with placing your fulfillment on the other side of contingencies. This is something that I talk about in a lot of my coaching sessions with people is a lot of times people want to accomplish all of these different things. And what I always do is I ask them, and I want you guys to do this as well as you listen to this, I want you guys to visualize yourself accomplishing all of your goals. Visualize yourself with that diamond record. Visualize yourself playing to a packed arena. And don't just visualize the scenery, visualize the experience, the feeling. How does it make you feel? I'll give you a moment to think about it, to ponder that. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel good. And what does that mean? Okay, the reason why you feel good is because in your vision, you're being present. You're being present. You will not be successful until you give yourself permission to be present. Because something that I did in the past was I placed my happiness on the other side of arbitrary accolades, arbitrary achievements that I set for myself because I thought that that was what I needed to do in order to find true happiness. I thought that, oh, once I get a thousand subscribers, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm living my best life. And then I hit a thousand. I was happy for all of two days. And then I said, you know what? I want 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, a million, so on and so forth. Eventually, I realized that no matter what you do, no matter what you achieve, until you give yourself permission to be present, to be actively present right here, right now, you will never actually feel the feeling that you want to feel. Once you allow yourself to feel present moment awareness, that is when not only will you be successful, but you can overcome your PMO addiction. <laughs>